Yes. And right. doing all of that. And it's like, why did you just marry a, a, another tax dependent? Like, <laughs> yeah. Do, what do does even he get, do for you? Do you even get breaks for being married, I guess? I guess you do, kind of. I think so, but sometimes it's more beneficial to not be. Yeah, and like, sometimes it just add they just add more work for you. Yeah. Because they're producing trash and stuff, but they're still t- expecting you to do the dishes or whatever. Right. And I mean, obviously there's some guys that will do their own stuff, but some just look at you as a maid <laughs> to do it yeah. for them. So. A maid... Uh, laundry. Yeah. Oh, laundry. Yeah. yeah. Mark does my laundry, though. That's, that's I'm the guy. <laughs> yeah, you have switched roles or whatever. You're a very... <laughs> but I'm not the breadwinner <laughs> either. Mark does make more than me. So you are the guy in your relationship. Yeah. You are the average male in the world as far as yeah. doing the unpaid labor. <laughs> I don't know. I think it, I wonder if it will switch in the future. I definitely think it's starting to. Like a lot of well, a lot more companies are having paternity leave. Yeah. And like that's a lot more men are viewing fatherhood as like not something they just get to choose to do when it's convenient for them. Right. Yeah, I do think there's people doing more of their share of stuff. Isn't there a book? I think it's called Fair Play. And there's, like, a stack of cards, too, that come with it that you can, like, have. There's, like, all these tasks, and you can pick out the ones that are relevant to your situation. But you, like, divide the stacks. Like, I do this, you do that, whatever. And then you have... Oh, I like that. Yeah, because then you have a visual of what do I do, what do you do, what maybe what do we share. And then you can see how big the stacks are. Yeah, that... And reshuffle them. I like that. Because you don't really know necessarily what people are doing for you, either. Right. So, but yeah. um, I would say, like, all this time on doing the unpaid labor can lead to women being overlooked in the workplace for things like promotions and higher bonuses. Because they can't always, like, stay late as their male coworkers could on average. Oh, yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, because still, like, so many companies view staying longer as a sign of a good worker, which is Even ridiculous if you itself. don't do anything. Yeah. yeah, right. Well, and, like, this is maybe a little bit off topic, and maybe we'll get to it, but, like, female hormone cycles don't work the same way that men's do. Yeah. So, like, a man can show up every single day because... Like, with the same energy levels because they have a 24-hour cycle. Right. But, like, for women, it varies so drastically over the course of a month that, like, sometimes you have high energy weeks and sometimes you have lower energy weeks. And if you don't honor that, you can really mess up your hormones and burn yourself out. Yeah. And the fact that we're expected to show up, which... That, I guess that's just what it is, but we're expected to show up and perform the same way every day and then go home and perform, like, get everything done. That's extremely draining, and it can cause, like, cortisol imbalances and everything. I think they're just starting to realize how detrimental a male lifestyle can be for a woman's body. Yeah, I think they are starting to do more research on that stuff. Like, I mean, when you said burnt out, I'm wondering, do women get burnt out more than men like now i'm don't i I don't know but think so and i know like cortisol and estrogen build on each other so like if you have super high cortisol all the time you probably well i think it actually it's not estrogen it's progesterone that like you're probably deficient in progesterone because you have high cortisol and they have the same like cofactors that go into it Mm. so if your whole body if your body's only focused on cortisol which when you have high cortisol that's all it's trying to do because it's in survival mode right then you're also causing hormonal imbalances that make your energy levels worse yeah and then that makes your cortisol (laughs) higher like it just makes it, it just keeps making it worse it's a feedback loop 
But for men, that doesn't necessarily happen because they don't... Like, I don't think testosterone has the same cofactor. And, like, they do have progesterone, but I think they have a higher... Hormonally, they have a higher tolerance for long-term stress than women do. Although I would say that women tend to have a higher tolerance for it anyway. Yeah. But that's just... That's not fact. Everything else I said is fact, but... Maybe not. I shouldn't say fact, but that's my understanding of yeah. how, like, adrenal fatigue and right. hormonal imbalances form. Yeah. Because there's definitely, I mean, obviously there's some weeks that I feel like I can do every single thing on my task list. And then other weeks, it's such a struggle to even do the basic things. And that's because right. of the hormone Just show cycle. Up. Right. Yeah. 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 And you d- could get docked for that sometimes. Yeah, if you're not, if your performance is inconsistent. Right. Or like, I'm working on this big project. Two weeks, I worked my ass off and I could because I had the energy there. Then the two following weeks, I didn't have the same energy and didn't get the same amount done. Yeah. Which is fine because I know in the next two weeks, I'll probably make it up. But like... If someone's just looking at that period, they're seeing, oh, she did really well, and then she really didn't do... Like, right. it can come off as laziness or complacency, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think there's not enough understanding of that in the workplace. You're expected to always be on. And, like, isn't it, too, I think the way meetings are set up a lot of the times are most ideal for men because men have the energy during those typical times and women just... Yeah, morning. Yeah. I think men have more energy in the morning and women have more energy in the afternoon and evening. Yeah. So it... But especially, like, even school, like, go have your hard classes at the beginning of the day. Like, it's just not... Right. Yeah, and I think it's just... Obviously, no one talks about it or... It's just not known because you could set up your own schedule possibly like eventually to meet your yeah. personal needs. But just no one even you just thinks what's wrong with me sometimes. Yeah. And I know if I tried to use that as an excuse oh, yeah. at work, like if I said, I'm sorry, I'm not very productive this week. I'm in my luteal phase. Right. They'd say, go fuck yourself. We don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they wouldn't literally say that, but they'd say, yeah, it sounds like an excuse to me. Right. Yeah, they still expect everything. I mean, also, we're in um, male-dominated. I wonder if the... I mean, obviously, female-dominated is still not understanding of that, but... Right, but I bet it's so different. Yeah, I'm literally the only girl on my engineering team of almost 50 people between the U.S. and Mexico. I'm the only girl. Yeah. So... They don't even... Well, I guess we do... Our admin is a girl, too, but she doesn't do that actual, like, engineering work. And she's a saint. But it's definitely, like, a culture shock a little bit. Yeah. All that energy or testosterone. Well, and it's... Yeah. They're just not... They're not thoughtful about things. But why would they have to be? They've literally never had another girl on the team right that changes a lot I think because then you have different perspective and I feel like they don't listen either sometimes no it's like they don't want to hear what I have to say yeah right or like when I'm designing a package and I'm the target audience like something that is mostly women who fit my demographic they don't really want to hear what I have to say about it, even though I'm going to be the one using it. Oh, finger holes need to be this big because yeah. you can't get your finger in there. And I'm like, my finger literally is like a half inch. Right. Or like, that's a bad one. But like, there are certain things where I'm like, I as a woman wouldn't be able to put this together because my hands aren't that big. And they're like, well, and I'm like, I'm just telling you, like, I can't hold these two parts together to slide this in. And they're like, well... You think they would care about that? Hand size is in here as an example for something later, but... (laughs) You would think if it's meant for women, they would care, but it's still not... 
Because it's me. mostly men designing I know. it. And they have their ways that they do yep. designs mm-hmm. because they don't think about any of the limitations. Right. Packaging design is <laughs> sexist. Right. I mean, because men are the default, but it's one thing to not recognize it. But when you have someone saying, no, this won't work for me and they still won't address it, then that is kind of sexist. Yeah. If they would take your stuff into consideration because you are the target audience, then that's different. But like, it's one thing to not have women around. So you never thought about it. But once women are around and you're still dismissing it, then that's a problem. Right. Well, especially if the customer, like, yeah. my contact is also a male, they just aren't going to value what I have to say, even if it's... Right. If it's... If I'm designing for a woman to design on... Decide on the design, that's different. But typically, it ends up being a man. Right. This is why women need to be more places, I guess. More diversity. Yeah. But yeah. Back to promotions and bonuses, I guess. Um it was found in the U.S. that the hourly wage for those working 50 hours or more per week, which 70% of those were men, they rose twice as fast since 1984 as hourly pay for those working 35 to 49 hours per week. That's sad. Right. Because men don't have as much they have to do at home, so they are, can right. do that. But yeah. And then they get recognized for it. So, But like another example is in Japan... Like, promotions definitely are based on hours worked. And, like, often even, like, workers will go to the bar after work to schmooze with the bosses and stay there till, like, midnight or something. And then go back the next day at, like, 6 a.m. and do it all over again. Like So the, like, wife literally does everything. Yeah. And, like, women could participate in this, but women in Japan, because they have husbands possibly or, like, elderly or whatever, they have an average of five hours unpaid labor each day, so they can't stay out. Men have an average of one hour in Japan of unpaid labor. So, like, that's, that's a so big sad. difference, right? Yeah, so women obviously can't participate as much and they're not going to be promoted as much because of that. Because you don't notice it but yeah a lot of this is silent obviously but yeah but yeah another thing we kind of talked about a little bit like maternity leave like paid paternity is also like horrible in the u.s and elsewhere but maternity leave is still so bad and like maternity leave you're not just taking care of a baby you're healing from like a serious medical event exactly Like, you have to heal yourself and take care of the baby. Like, paternity is a nice benefit and would be good for helping, but you're not healing yourself. It's like sick time plus taking care of. Yeah. But, yeah. You did just have, like, a major life changing. Yeah. Right. And, like, I don't know about elsewhere, but the U.S., like, federally just has the Family Medical Leave Act, which is 12 weeks of protected leave, but it's unpaid. So, like, companies have their own policies, and some of it could be paid, but, like, if if companies want to just do the 12 weeks unpaid, no one can leave that long to actually right. do that. So it's useless. And also, apparently... The FMLA only applies to employees of a company that has more than 50 employees there, and you have to work there for at least 12 months, which is apparently only around 60% of the workforce, so it doesn't even cover a lot of people. I mean, it covers majority, but barely. But because of, like, all that, one in four mothers return to work in the U.S. after only two weeks. Like, I can't imagine leaving after two weeks like leaving a two week old like what do you do with who yeah Yeah. with who at some daycare or like maybe with a family member which is probably also a woman typically but Uh, yeah huge privilege to be able to do that yeah but i just can't and also that can't be good for childhood development either i wouldn't think so because then you can't I mean, you can pump milk, I guess, but, like, you're not gonna... It makes it a lot harder. Yes. 
And I can't imagine, like, you have to be in pain still, right? Like, I would think you're in pain for a while. You, I can't imagine going back to work. Yeah, and like the muscle strain. Right, and being and on my And hormonally, you're so messed up. Yeah, and postpartum depression, yeah. 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 Some people 